Welcome to lecture number 28 of UCE 463-6063 Modern Control Kelman Filters. As a recap, if all the states of a system are measured, you can use full state feedback to control a dynamic system. You can use either Boscura, pole placement to find the feedback gains, or LQR techniques. If the states are not measured, I can use the full order observer. And again, the observer gains H can be found using Boscora or LQR techniques, like we did in our last lecture. Now, either way, the observer gains are somewhat arbitrary. In both cases, as long as you're stable, the observer states will converge to the plant states. Once it's converged, it'll track. But here's a problem for you. Suppose there are disturbances. I've got input disturbances, such as wind, sunlight, coming into the plant. The observer doesn't see these. How do you handle that? What if I have sensor noise? Coming in over here, where the what I measure is different than the actual output. Again, this is something that's going to feed into the observer through H. How do I find H in, the, in that case? In this case, H isn't arbitrary. If I have a lot of disturbances at the input, what I want to do is base the dynamics my estimate of the dynamics based upon the outputs. I want H to be large, because if I have good measurements, but not the dynamics and the outputs, I can tell you what the states are. And I'll force H to follow the output, regardless of the input disturbances. On the other hand, if I have lousy sensors, I don't want to use H. I want H to be very small, because the sensor noise comes in and is amplified if H is large in my observer. If I have both state disturbances and sensor noise, then I need a trade-off. If H is too small, then the input disturbances will cause the observer not to track. If H is too large, then the sensor noise will cause the observer not to track. So the question is, what is the best H? What H makes the observer states as close as possible to the plant states? A Kelman filter is simply an observer where I use a very specific Q&R in designing the observer gains. What the Kelman filter is, is the best observer. Best meaning I minimize the variance between the plant states and the observer states, or it's the expected error between the square of the two. Turns out the solution to that is use a very specific Q&R. Q is just your FV times FV transpose, and recalling what those are, that's the input matrix F times the amplitude of the disturbance. My R matrix is WW transpose. Again, going back, W is the sensor noise, the standard deviation sensor noise. If I use that very specific QNR, I'll wind up with an optimal observer called a Kalman filter. Essentially, Kalman filter is just a high flutin word for a full order observer with a very specific QNR. An example of how those work. Suppose I have the fourth order heat equation one more time. I've got a disturbance on the first state. And it has a mean of zero, standard deviation of one. Find the optimal observer when I have sensor noise. Either the sensor noise is 0.01 for the standard deviation, meaning very good sensor. 0.1 or 1 mean I have a really lousy sensor. Starting out, if I have a good sensor, where the sensor noise is small, 0.01, and I have state disturbances, I'll find Q and R, plug those into my LQR methods to find the observer gains, and it gives me a Kelman filter. My inputs, I've got an input from the set point, the reference, my input from the disturbance on the states, and my input from the sensors. Um, this is where H shows up. H takes the sensor noise directly into the observer, in this case, these gains don't really matter because the sensor noise is so small. That won't affect my observer states all that much. If I then simulate with random uh, points, what I wind up is here's the states x1, x2, x3, x4. x1 has the disturbance. The blue state is the actual output. The pink is the observer estimate. Again, the blue state has disturbances the observer doesn't see, but it's still able to track it fairly well. These are the actual states. You might wonder, well, if I can measure the fourth state, 
why do I use the observer for it rather than the actual measurement? The reason is this. If I have sensor noise, that's the light blue line, the observer might actually provide a better measurement than the actual measurement. The observer goes through a filter and it's trying to come up with an estimate of the actual state, not the measured state. So even if you can measure an output, sometimes you don't want to use it. I'd rather use the estimate from the observer. Let's look at a second case. Suppose I have more input disturbances, or more sensor noise. <clears throat> In that case, the observer gains drop. That kind of makes sense. If I have more noise, I don't want to amplify it quite as much, so the observer gains get smaller. And now, if I look at the actual states versus the estimated states, again, I'm tracking fairly well. It's kind of a weighted average. I know what the input is. I know what the output is. I know what the dynamics are. Using those three and a Kelman filter, I can come up with better estimates of what the actual states are. The third case, if I have really lousy sensors, the sensors basically become zero. Base becomes zero. I've got lousy sensors, so I basically disregard the outputs. They're not zero. There is some information there, but it's very small. In that case, what I wind up with is almost an open-loop observer. I know the input is a step. Given the input, I can tell you what the states are. And I'm sort of ignoring the output, at least not counting it very heavily. That way, the sensor noise doesn't appear on my state estimates. That's the idea of a Kelman filter. Again, it's just a high pollutant word for a very specific observer with a very specific Q and R designed with LQR methods. The property of a Kelman filter, it's the best observer when you have a noisy system. Best in terms of I want to minimize the variance between the actual states and my estimates.